Over the last few years, I've travelled far and wide around the UK in search for all different types of historic sites. From ancient burial tombs to 19th century warships, I have visited hundreds of heritage sites both big and small, famous and hidden. In honour of all these places I've been to, I thought it would be a good idea to highlight some of my personal favourites. Now, if you are familiar with my channel, you'll know that I enjoy the lesser known historic sites, the ones lost to time or forgotten about, or just generally hidden from public view. So, with that in mind, some of my favourite historic sites may not be what you'd think as an easy guess. Also, I simply couldn't find any way to justify comparing Neolithic henges to splendorous Gothic cathedrals, nor could I weigh ancient Roman architecture against Bronze Age settlements that came before it. So, I have decided to dedicate a number of videos on this subject, with the first instalment being my personal top medieval sites of Britain. Our journey begins in Wales, in the valleys of Clan Gothlin. In the shadow of the nearby Castel Dinas Bran lies a solemn monastic ruin which is none other than Valle Crucis Abbey. This may be a curious choice for most people who know of my travels, considering I've visited hundreds of medieval abbeys all around Britain, but Valle Crucis Abbey stole my heart due to one particular component within its architecture. Hugging the now destroyed cloisters stands the remarkably preserved ruins of the southern wing of the abbey. This is an extraordinarily rare opportunity to see parts of the monastic buildings still at their full height, not only that, but they still contain their original vaulted stone ceilings. Usually, due to the dissolution of the Monasteries Act imposed by King Henry VIII, most first floor buildings and abbeys and priories were completely dismantled, leaving only ground height foundations with the odd solitary wall or archway. But in the case of Valle Crucis, you are free to explore within these rooms and admire the masonry from inside. Not only this, but you may also let your imagination run wild with the artistic paintwork that surely used to adorn the walls within these monastic rooms, and wonder what wooden furniture and goods were stored here. The Abbey of Valle Crucis is, therefore, a magical place in my books, tucked away within the imposing valleys of northern Wales and easily missable. Admittedly, I only came across this ruin per chance myself, as I happened to be on the road looking down at the river and noticed a rather large stone structure appear from above the adjoining campsite. The fact that even I almost overlooked it when I have ventured to almost every far reach of Wales makes it a hidden gem indeed. Alas, we now say goodbye to Wales for now, as we arrive in Essex. Yes, your ears don't deceive you, one of my favourite medieval historic sites in Britain is indeed in Essex. Headingham Castle is an outstanding example of a 12th century Norman keep. Surviving at full height, this castle has been expertly restored to keep all of its original medieval floors, with special effort taken to give each room a medieval feeling. The castle floor space is purposefully left somewhat bare, as the site is most commonly used for weddings and what better place to get married in than a genuine medieval castle which has largely been left untouched to stay true to its original Norman design. Unfortunately, all the original medieval outbuildings have been demolished, the bailey walls and the gatehouse are also long gone, but the keep stands proud despite being hidden within the woodlands that surround it. Not only is this castle a beautiful sight, but the grounds are expansive and breathtaking containing fish ponds which have been in use since the 12th century, a lake, and several impressive garden features. It is surely an honour to walk around the grounds of Headingham Castle. The Bailey grounds also host jousting tournaments, living history shows and private events which makes your visit even more valuable. Due to being an impressive Norman keep in an unlikely area, and quite literally hidden by the trees that surround it, Headingham Castle is indeed one of my favourite castle sites within Britain. Moving further south from Essex, we now visit Hampshire, where the history-rich city of Winchester stands proud as a gem of the county. Home to the infamous Winchester Cathedral, medieval colleges, gorgeous timber buildings from the Tudor period, Wolvesley Castle, and much, much more. Although Winchester is just too well known to be on a list of top medieval historic sites for me. Instead, let's take a short walk down the river south of Winchester, and soon we see a reassuringly medieval structure peak from above the tree line. This is the Hospital of St. Cross, a medieval hospital which continues to be in use by monks to this very day. 
This landmark easily makes it onto my list of favourite medieval historic sites because it is the physical proof for something I have been trying to show with my platform for many years. The medieval period was not a war, disease, dull, famine, grey and mud. They had copious amounts of hospitals, homeless shelters, schools and other societal buildings all available to the general public. This line of chimney terraced buildings were homes for the sick, being taken care of by a team of monks and holy servants who worked here. There were also well looked after outdoor spaces for the ill to walk around and regain their strength or simply enjoy some fresh air. Libraries and gardening were available to keep them preoccupied, food halls for the homeless and less fortunate to receive a hot meal, beds to take care of wary travellers and pilgrims for the night, and of course a religious building for the use of prayer, as this was all funded by the church. During the medieval period, the church paid for many things which helped keep society running and constantly developing. Indeed, if you've watched my video about medieval friaries, you'll know that friaries were hospitals, care homes, homeless shelters and much more, situated in almost every town and city across Britain. Despite most of these medieval buildings being demolished over the centuries that followed, the Hospital of St Cross in Winchester is the living embodiment of the softer, more caring side of life during the Middle Ages. In a time where the church was much more involved within society, economics, politics and government. And hence, due to the lessons this place teaches, the medieval hospital of St Cross in Winchester goes on my list of top medieval historic sites of Britain. Like anyone, I am always keen for a two for one offer. As such, you will understand my excitement when I realised that the entry to Trey Tower Court in southern Wales also gained me access to Trey Tower Castle, hidden in the court's back garden. Trey Tower is a stupendous medieval survival, as it is a mostly original 14th century private home. Of course, there have been partial renovations done in the 15th, 16th and 17th centuries, but the majority of the stone and mortar of the early 14th century. Indeed, most of the construction was done in the year 1300 on the dot, the very first year of the 14th century. As you arrive at Trey Tower Court, you immediately note the fortified element. Although a domestic dwelling, this was most certainly a stronghold worth defending. The stone gatehouse and the wall walk mask the wooden gallery which, despite much of the wood being reconstructed in modern times due to rotten weathering, is very much a notable feature of contemporary medieval 14th century halls. It is incredible that something like this survived through the later renovations, as it would be so easy to dismantle in favour for something more modern as a replacement. Inside the building you find many rustic wooden partition walls, floorboards and doorways, most of which are from the 1300s. Great effort has been taken by the preservation team to give a sense of daily life in upper class domestic homes, with each room being kitted out such as storage rooms, kitchens, dining rooms, bed chambers and even an orchard garden outside. As mentioned before, Trey Tower Court features a castle in the grounds behind the court, this was the family home prior to the construction of the 14th century dwelling and as a shell keep. Originally a Norman Mott and Bailey, the castle also developed over the 12th and 13th centuries to keep up with the new trends of castle development and used to be an imposing feature within the landscape of the Ranoff Valley. Our journey ends in Cornwall, but which historic site have I picked to be on my list? Tintagel, St Michael's Mount, I've chosen a humble chapel. But this isn't just any chapel, this is the Chapel of Roach Rock. You've never heard of Roach Rock? Well, good. Barely anyone has. And yet, it's one of the most beautiful medieval historic sites that Britain has to offer. In my view, trumping some of the grandest cathedrals and castles in the country. Roach Rock is a 15th century chapel built atop a stunning outcrop of igneous rock, which is a defunct volcano. Yes, a volcano in Britain. The chapel itself is made of stone, hence the name Roach Rock, Roach being the Norman word for rock. There is barely any signage to point out this historic site to the public, nor is there any entrance fee or proper parking. This is a medieval ruin which has been given back to nature. It sits within a heath of Jurassic terrain, with large boulders, bracken and gigantic ferns impeding the pathway towards the outcrop. To access the chapel you must first scale an iron ladder bolted to the rock face, and you do so at your own risk as there are no safety rails. 
Once inside the two-storey chapel, you can then climb a second ladder which takes you to the roof. Here you can witness a breathtaking view of the Cornish countryside. It is a beautiful place to sit for hours in contemplation, offering the ability to let your imagination run free, becoming inspired by the location. I have visited here twice and both times I have been struck by the sheer incredible beauty that this place provides. The fact that this has not been commercialised and has been left for nature to reclaim is exactly the kind of historic site that would take the top spot on my list of medieval historic sites in Britain. Let me know if you are aware of any of these places mentioned and I'd love to hear what your own personal top historic sites in Britain list would be. Feel free to leave a comment as I always enjoy reading them and I reply to every single one that I can. Next time I will be turning the clocks back as I discuss my top favourite Roman historic sites in Britain. But until then, thanks for watching.